comes from your spirit to offer to him this morning as a sacrifice. Just open your mouth and offer that unto the Lord this morning. Let's just begin to do that. Oh, Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Oh, Father, we worship you. Maso de Brekate, Ayeba Leda Bosa Sande Rebose Tia di Shamanda. Oh, Lord, you are worthy. Yo wo dona wo ni prate me se kale me de sori kabelia sita me manti si prakira de na dele kada suna de rakia de azana bariam be rabasu se de brekete mi liberate kabene be de rakuda shana me de rabasu la sia oh father we worship you maso se brekete we thank you lord for the privilege to gather before you this morning like this eni mo karia me de sanderia sanis kabora maso prate ba ba me de kete Mekete bridi simi kataduri amande sene botambra hasiza lageta medeuda shane lege prakadiska bili bara kuya sazena ah yaba yaba sata yaba sata yaba yaba sala deya na deya doso kosende siase we say welcome welcome Holy Spirit welcome Holy Spirit maso kasa let this time be yours maso kambra deteli ataya sa we give this time over to you O sweet Holy Spirit irame kaya mesh. Oh, there is none like unto you. Father, we worship you and welcome your presence this morning. We ask that you have your way. We ask that you have your way. For we are gathered unto you and not unto man. And so we ask that you have your way this morning. what are we doing? Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. Masanda Brekete Masata Sombra Hadiveria Sonesa Bakides in Bakaya no Sendesa. Oh, you are worthy Miss Sombra Bidi Kalande Sedebahade and then the Bro Sheba de Rianda Sidimetaya Saya Kayanda de Rio Sataria. Thank you, Father. Masopra Degate. For who are we that you are mindful of us? But we thank you because of your presence. We thank you that you are here in our midst. Asemaya Barakada Setese Makakato Satato Lebre de Kete Masataria Satania Seteria Ali Brada Casona. Oh, down to the Lord to the gathering of the people we took in our garden. We had a Lebe Doso Riva Mesa Sanderia. We hand over the meeting to you, oh God. We come in the Bosque Sembre de Senderia Susa Kayame. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Um, welcome this morning to the prayers. This is day two of our monthly prayers. Um, and uh, I just want to say welcome to everyone. 
Uh, before we start the prayers this morning, we're going to uh, take a, a couple of testimonies um, and they'll be very quick because um, <clears throat> there's some prayer points that we have to take this morning. But I want to just give that uh, time that we take some testimonies. Please, you know, the reason we take these testimonies is one, because we have to give God the thanks, right? We have to come back. We have to be like that one leper um, that came back to give God thanks, right? And um, also there's, you know, what this testimony is achieved in other people's lives. It truly is a, you know, booster for their faith. It, it, it brings someone else to the point of believing for their own miracle. And so that's why we take them. So um, before we uh, go on, if you have a testimony, you can raise up your hand. We'll take that really quick. But we have two people this morning who have indicated their interest. Okay, thank you, Kenny. Um, we have two people who have indicated their interest in sharing their testimony this morning. So if you have a testimony, you know, feel free to raise up your hand and then we'll just take you really quickly and get into the press for this morning. So, um, Madam Kenny, please feel free to come off mute so that you can share with everyone. Everyone, good morning, ma'am. I have to share the testimony because I want to first oh. testify about um, my brother. I remember like two or three weeks ago on the family altar, 10 hours prayer. You were mentioning praying about um, family members going through maybe alcohol and other vices that they into alcohol and other vices. And he joined um, a peer, it was under a peer treasure and he was uh, picking cigarettes as well. So we've been praying for him. So just um, last week, from two weeks ago, there about two, not too far from the prayer time, he, he was ill and um, it was because of what, what all the things that they're consuming has been affecting him. So we've been, we're praying, he was on medication, we're praying and uh, God perfected the healing. He's now free of those things and he is in sound health. Secondly, my oh, second yeah. testimony is about myself. This Monday, this week, that just is about ending, I woke up with pain by the right side, a lower abdomen. So I want to believe like my right kidney. So I will be having these pains at, at interval. So I'll be praying. I will just pray, God, heal me. Because it's whatever is not planted must be uprooted. So it happened all through Monday, Tuesday, then when is the when I slept, God assured, showed me the extent of what he healed. He showed me how swollen, I had a dream that my tummy was swollen. And it was, I was touching, it was really, really hard. So God was now showing me in the dream that this is what he actually healed me from. In the physical, it wasn't, it was just a pain, one-sided pain I was feeling. He showed me that that was what he actually healed me from, that that was what the enemy actually intended. So I woke up, since then I've been thanking God, sharing testimonies wherever I can. Yesterday I was unable to, that's why I said I, I requested to share today. So I thank God for healing me, and I want to encourage every one of us that God answers prayers, even on this altar. So we should not despair and not give up. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Madam Kenny. Thank you, Madam Kenny. Um, in case people didn't hear, because uh, I think the sound was a little muffled, I had to lean in a lot to hear. She shared two testimonies, the first about her brother, and she referenced a particular family altar meeting that we had a, a few weeks ago where the Holy Spirit had ministered to us to address, you know, alcoholism um, and then other kind of vices that, you know, are in people's lives that, you know, maybe, you know, bloodline trailed and um, so she's testifying that her brother, who was already taken by, you know, smoking and, you know, some of these other vices, and they had been, you know, trusting God to bring him out of it. So one thing led to another, and he fell sick, you know, as a result of some of these habits and had to be your medication and all of that. And I guess that was the, the source of his deliverance. And um, following that bout of sickness and taking the medications and all of that, his, you know, eyes finally opened and he has... Um, giving up that way of life and is no longer involved in that and that is a beautiful powerful testimony that I just want us to appreciate God for so however you can whether by putting a reaction um, or you know putting a comment let's just appreciate God for that testimony the second one is about her health um, Madam Kenny I would need your help here because I think I heard you say something about your son and then I I heard you talk about a pain that was in your um, abdomen 
please help me clarify. I know you said your son and then you said a pain that was in your abdomen. I'm sorry, because I think I may have missed the link between those two. I, I'm not, I didn't know my sound is not clear. I don't know if it's better now. Okay, it's a little better now. Okay, uh, not my son. I don't have a son yet. I don't have a child yet. It's about <laughs> okay. me. Okay, thank <laughs> it's you, a, thank you. It's because... about me. Yeah, yes. the sound wasn't clear, so I may have misheard. But so she was saying that she had a pain in her abdomen somewhere around her right kidney. And um, she had been, you know, just asking God to touch her and heal her. And she had uh, an encounter or yeah, a visitation, you know, from God that showed her the extent of what was going on with her and how that he had, you know, already healed that um, affliction in her body. So we celebrate God for his healing power and just give all the glory to him. Thank you, um, Madam Penny, for that testimony. Shade, please go on. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I, I just want to give thanks to God um, for what he did last week and what he has done for me this year. Um, I, I've been, you know, very open about how this year was was extremely trying for me and lots of warfare, lots of things. And I want to give thanks to God for 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 two things specifically. Um, one of them is actually deliverance from like I would say complete deliverance from um, bloodline curses and and all of that. Um, you know, Amy is actually very particular, um, very, <laughs> she's been very involved <laughs> in this, <laughs> this entire year and in, and has been such a, a strong support. God has really, really used her to, re uh, to, to reveal a lot of things. And, and I think if there's anything I learned this year, it's that you cannot do this alone. You need to partner with people you need, because I cannot see everything. I cannot know everything. And so um sometimes I'll just wake up and, and she will have one dream and she will share with me and all of that what that did was expose what was hidden and then I'll know how to pray and then we'll see the victory so I just want to thank God for surrounding me and it's not just her even like the prophetic team from EIC like there'll be times I'll call them I say please let me can you guys pray for me and and they will just cover me with prayers and you know they've, it's just been a very strong um support system because it was a very trying very very trying year um the second thing I want to just thank God for is you know linking to the first part which was some of the things that were training my bloodline and they were causing a lot of um loss on my end and I experienced significant loss and I just kept receiving a word restoration a season of restoration is coming or oh, this thing has been broken this and that and one of the things that I knew would be a tangible um side effect of that thing being broken off of my life was actually a signed contract by a certain date in August like I I got a prophetic word I got that date and I held on to it and I and I just said God I know by this date by August 25th you're gonna do it and he did it literally on oh, that yeah. day I signed that contract and it was such a huge blessing. So I just want to thank God. I just want to thank God because it literally, I don't know how the whole thing happened. His favor just came upon me. He just put mm. me in the right place at the right time. I know it was not by my doing. It was not by my wisdom, but God showed up. And thank God that I was not asleep when he showed up to give me this thing. And I was able to <laughs> obey and he showed up. And, and I just want to return all the glory to God for this miracle. Um, yes, yeah, so that's my testimony. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much <clears throat> for sharing, Shadi. Um, I, I don't even know what to say, and I'm speechless about um, Shadi's testimony. Um, but yes, we give God all the glory. This is, you know, the, only the Lord's doing, only the Lord's doing. And sometimes it makes it a little different when, like she said, you are involved, right, in the back end. And, and we'll, we'll even... This is just a perfect uh, tie into the prayers that we're taking this morning, but it's a blessing when you're privileged to be in the back end and then you also get to, you know, celebrate a testimony with the one who God has shown up for. So, you know, however you can just go on and celebrate God in the comments, in, you know, re reaction, whatever it is, let's just praise the name of the Lord. We'll move quickly through the other testimonies, two more. I actually thought it was one person who was going to testify this morning and now we have four. Okay, Aramina, please go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor Amy. Good morning. 
glory to you, glory back to God. Um, last month, twelfth of um, August was my wedding anniversary, twelfth thirteenth actually. So that. Aramina, we can't hear you anymore. Hello? Okay, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, so um, after that day, okay, during the, the date that you were talking, and it was like, ah, you, the, uh, you've improved recently what do you think changed i just smiled i said jesus that changed me ever since i joined yes ever since i changed me too i noticed it we quarrel less we are more in sync the the relationship is sweeter to return the glory to god especially since we started this mount of prayers there have been burdens that don't even know that i exist in a is the result you know see that like, ah, ah so this thing has been here in my office we 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 removed five snakes hmm. that's it so these things were inside this place and i always used to go around that place during um because i don't want to disturb the other colleagues i'll be moving around the compound during my um, um prayer time and i just want to it is his hand and it is very evident. It is just the finger of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, some of us may not understand how powerful that first testimony she shared is. But when I tell you the bulk of what a woman may deal with in her life or be held down by or be burdened by is the condition in her marriage. That's an honest truth. And so some of us may not understand just how powerful that testimony is. You know, speaking of how like the home is just a much different place the relationship is much different fewer quarrels uh more synergy you don't understand the extent of that it's it's it's, it's not even so much about one person or two people not quarreling it is much deeper than that that is a powerful testimony i mean i thank you so much for sharing it's not every time when it's like oh you know maybe some new job new cow need this thing that is a powerful testimony and i just want uh you know to release a word that everyone who's trusting God for that kind of intervention in their marriage as well, something to the, uh, you know, what Eremina testified about concerning her home and her relationship with her husband. I pray that everyone who's trusting God for that kind of improvement, that kind of growth in their marriage relationship, experience the same in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then the second testimony, even about her office and just, you know, how her prayer life has improved and the things that have come up to the surface that have been dealt with as a result of that. Um, we just give God the glory for that testimony. Okay. Uh, blessing, please, please go next. You're muted if you're talking, blessing. Hmm. We still can't hear you, blessing. Are you there? Sorry, good morning. I was trying okay. to mute. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Good morning. Um, I just want to give God all the praise and all the adoration. Indeed, he has been faithful. Um, Madam Amy can testify to that. I've been burdened with uh, family issues concerning um, this marriage, so family evil pattern and foundations and everything since last year. Because I even brought it up at the um, Friday prayer last year when it was said that um, it was foundations and everything. And since last year, we've been battling, praying, yeah, and everything. And um, when I told Madam Amy and um, Mr. Damola, they said, I should not worry, we'll pray about it and everything. She tabled it. And last month, God just did it. God answered and came oh, to, yeah. even before... Uh, I even had a dream that um, that every um, family evil pattern has been broken. Mm. So and that was when my victory started. And oh, I just yeah. want to say 
you, Jesus, that finally oh. that my father has agreed for the wedding to take place wherever I want. And I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much no. for sharing. Yes. Oh, sorry, but okay. Were you done? Sorry, I think your voice dropped a little bit and I thought you were done. Were you done? I'm done. Okay. Okay, praise mm-hmm. the Lord, praise the Lord. So for others who don't know, Blessing was facing, you know, heavy contention as far as getting married. And it was, you know, such that it was massively delaying the wedding. Um, and, you know, we had prayed and just agreed with her in faith. And so she's coming back to testify that the major thing that was a blocker for that wedding to happen, which was, you know, predominantly just some, some stuff going on in her family and then manifesting in a different kind of way. But the major thing that was a hindrance to that wedding happening without that one decision, it was not going to happen. And so God stepped in, intervened and moved that um, obstacle out of the way. And so she's back here today to give thanks to the Lord. So we just want to appreciate God for all these testimonies that have been shared this morning in one minute. Um, we're going to just appreciate God for all these testimonies that have happened this morning. They are sealed by the blood of the Lamb. And everyone who's trusting God for one testimony in their life, another Harumana says that we invited. That's true blessing. You will have to give a table to um, King Zaro people <laughs> and AIC members as well. So everyone who's trusting God for one testimony or another in their life, I pray that this testimony is a point of contact for you to believe and lay hold on God for the delivery of your own miracle in the name of Jesus. So wherever we are, let's just unmute. Let's just open our mouth and return the thanks to God. Let's just open our mouth and return the thanks to God. Father, we bless your name. We worship you. We give all the praise to you because these testimonies were wrought by you. You alone have brought these testimonies our way. So we give all the praise to your name. We thank you, Father, because they are permanent. We thank you, Father, because they are sealed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, because the word says we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I thank you, Father, because everyone else here who is waiting for their breakthrough, for their deliverance, and is listening to this testimonies to this morning they receive their own testimonies in the name of jesus lord we give all the praise and adoration to your name for in jesus name we have prayed amen and amen okay so we're gonna take some prayers this morning and then i'm going to use the last few minutes to minister to some specific people that the lord highlighted between yesterday's prayers and this morning um so We'll take a few prayer points and um actually i've been spending some time well not like well i ended up going back into first kings um just because uh, the holy spirit laid it on my heart to go back there and um as i was studying i was just taking up some some things and so we're going to be taking some prayers this morning and they're going to come from first kings the message is going to be very clear or very you know pointed and so um you know, the prayers we're going to take would be from that part of the Bible. Now, before we even do that, there was a prayer that we took yesterday. And by the time I went back to bed after we had finished the meeting yesterday, I received um, an actual visitation along the lines of that prayer. And the honest truth is even, you know, me who raised the prayer, I also stood in there as part of those who are, you know, presenting something before God. And um, without going into details, I had the most unexpected visitation. And I just want us to spend some time to pray that prayer again today. There's truly something that God is wanting to do for as many people as as are making that same prayer request. The prayer request that I asked that we uh, take yesterday was a prayer of thanksgiving. And I asked that we give thanks to God for something specific, maybe two things, whatever it is, that we are still trusting God to do before the year comes to an end. And that was the first prayer that we took, you know, within the Thanksgiving section before we started uh, the prayers for the day. And um, of all the prayers that we took, that was the first thing that um, I got a visitation about. So I wanted to take that prayer because it is clear that the Holy Spirit, you know, is ho- like listening and he's actually moving on those on those prayers. So we're going to open our mouth again. We're going to give thanks to God. Whatever that thing is that you thanked God for yesterday, make sure you have it also this morning. We're just going to say thank you, Father. And I said, mention that one thing specifically 
I was blown away because, I mean, of course, I believe God when I pray, but I wasn't even thinking too deeply about it. It was one of those things where I like, yeah, you know, if God does it, then it's great. And if not, you know, you're not, but then it's like God actually wants to do it, right, is what I saw. So we're going to open our mouths. That thing that we've been believing on God for, I don't know whether it's a new house, a new car, your something in your business, something in your career, something in your home, anything it is. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you had it on your list of things that you were going to get done this year, that you were expecting God to do for you this year, it's still not done, but you are still trusting that God can do it before the year ends. Let's open our mouth and in one minute again, like we did yesterday, give God thanks for it in advance, throwing that seed of thanksgiving ahead of our testimony. Let's just open our mouth, whatever that is for you. One minute, let's pray that before we get into the prayers. Father, I bless your name. I thank you. Gorande Shambra de Ketelia, Menda Pira Kazambo, Opelis, Kamande, Burra, Kayan, De Senemusha, Talia, Se, Nekeribo, Suneni, Ilibateria, Sinante, Caborino, Shande. Father, I thank you for sending helpers into my business. I thank you for expanding my business. I thank you for bringing the helpers, bringing the, the skilled men. Father, bringing the men of means into my business. I thank you for expanding our line, expanding our range. I thank you for placing us in the stores. I thank you for placing us on the shelves in the name of Jesus. I thank you for bringing us to distributors in the name of Jesus. I thank you for exposure. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for speaking our, the word of our business into the hearts of many. Father, I, ask, I thank you, Father, for raising men, men of influence, men in the industry who can say things and cause things to change. Father, I thank you for bringing them into my business. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I thank you for my business is spreading across the country. Father, I bless your name because we're extending into the physical stores. I thank you because you're sending men that can help me to bring this to pass. Thank you, Father, because those new items to be added to our range that we have been impressed upon our heart. I thank you because you are granting us the capacity to expand in that way, to expand along those lines in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the men who would take up the cause of our business and, and work with it and bring us into our wealthy place in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Ladies, I just want to let you know that whatever it is that you presented and give thanks ahead for, I stand in agreement with you. And um, I know that the Lord will do it before the end of this year, between now and December 31st, you will lay hold of your testimony. And like others who mm -hmm. have testified this morning and yesterday, you will come by to testify with the reference Amen. point in the prayers of thanksgiving Amen. that you made this morning in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 So let's just take a few prayers this morning. Um, uh, like I said, I was studying around the book of First Kings and uh, the, early, the early chapters of First Kings. And there are some things that I want us to uh, pay attention to at least pray, um, you know, accordingly based on the things that happened there. And you see, before I even go on, I noticed just a theme, a running theme, you know, with these different prayer points after I had written them down by the help of the Holy Spirit. And it ties back to the scripture that says that, you know, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit. And essentially what we're seeing there is that the course of your life is going to be largely dependent on how you use your mouth. You know, are there things in your life that, you know, instead of speaking, you know, what you'd like to see, you're speaking the negative uh, possibilities. Are there things in your life that you are looking at it and it's not, you know, looking how you want it to, and then you're not even doing anything about it, right? These are different ways that you can use your tongue. And the Bible lets us know that the course of your life, you know, will reflect what you're doing um, with, with uh, your tongue, right? Whether you're speaking uh, life or you're speaking death, 
or you're not even using it at all, right? And so there are a few things that I had noticed in um, as I was reading through this story that uh, you know made me want us to to take note and you know make this prayers. And I said that Shadi's testimony was um, you know kind of perfectly leading into this. And you know what? Not even just Shadi, even you know I think everyone else who's testified, you know, but. There's, some, there's something that stood out um, for me. And again, like I said, it's interesting when you have, you know, that involvement on the back end, and then you also can now stand and hear the testimony. And one thing that being, has been consistent or that I know, you know, was very prevalent with Shade basically pressing and insisting on her breakthrough was that at no point did she just like keep quiet about things, right? Because there are times that that's our posture things are going bad, things are falling apart, and then we're just quiet. It's like we're hoping that somehow if we don't talk about it, it's going to go away. And that's honestly not how things work, right? So if there's nothing that I can say about, you know, Shadi, you know, is that she did not keep quiet about it. Like she was willing to contend, confront, just continue to address and press and push you know, for her victory, and it's very important. So if we look at the story, um, you know, how the uh, the book of First Kings starts out, we'll see a few things there. So this is the story of how Solomon even got to uh, sit on the throne. And the Bible records um, from verse five of chapter one, it says, then Adonijah, the son of Haggai, exalted himself saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him and his father had not displeased him at any time in saying why hast thou done so and he also was a very goodly man and his mother bare him after um, Absalom so this is the story of Adonijah who for whatever reason stood up one day right and decided that you know what my father is sick. My father is not able to rule anymore. And um, I'm going to be king. He just stood up and decided by himself. But what's interesting is this, because you then wonder, like, how did he get so bold? How did things get to that point where he, like, he really, he, he wasn't even going to do it, like, you know, in the side and, you know, trying to stage a court or whatever. He didn't even try to do any of that, right? Um, he did it right there and then. He just said, you know what, I'm going to be king. Gathered people and gathered horsemen and said, let them be going to, um, establish his kingship. But verse six is what I want us to pay attention to because it said here, it said, and his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, why has that done so? And if you read it from other translations, it's not just saying that his father did not ask him, why are you doing this? No, what that verse is saying that in all of Adonijah's life, his father had never called him out. His father had never displeased him. That's what it means when it says at any time, not just on that matter. It's saying that at every point in time where Adonijah had done something that was not right, something that was not um, acceptable, the Bible says his father did not displease him by saying anything about it. He wouldn't say anything about it. And so we look at a situation where Adonijah may have started with, I don't know, taking other people's toys, his siblings' toys. Mm-hmm. He's not been told anything about it. So I think uh, someone needs to mute, please. If everybody can mute, you know, um, you know, maybe going where he wasn't supposed to go and nobody said anything up to him about it. And it was this little, little bits of disobedience here and there, this little, little bits of just um, defiance here and there that his father never addressed right? And then fast forward to this point in time where there needs to be a, a, a crucial matter, a transition, right, of the, of, of, the of, of kingship. And he stood up and decided, I'm just going to be king. So when you think about where he got his, his guts from, if you will, well, there you have it, right? And <clears throat> he didn't even do it thinking, I'm going to fight. At least when Absalom tried it, you know, he was ready to fight. This one, he, he is just like, you know, it's mine. I want it and I'm taking it, right? And that was it for him. Because as the Bible records, it says in his life, his father never said anything when he did anything that was wrong. So I want us to take note of that this morning, because like I said, a lot of the things that happen in a person's life will be determined by the use of their tongue. If his father had started to chastise him from when he was younger, when there was a small thing here and a small thing there, perhaps it wouldn't have gotten to the point where he just felt bold enough to decide that he was going to take a throne that did not belong to him. 
So I want us to pray this morning because what this is, is that these matters that come into your life, right? They come little by little. They show up as a little discomfort here, a little discomfort there. And because you don't say anything about it, they take it the next step. They take it the extra mile. And then you're okay with it. And then you continue on like that until it becomes something that is bigger than you, that has the capacity to destabilize, you know, the entire picture of your life. Like what we see here. What was not addressed, what was not faced head on with Adonijah is what has now come to almost destabilize the, 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 uh, the throne. So I want us to take a prayer this morning because I don't know what it is that is in your life. It's like I said, you know, if I would call it the making of Shalit's testimony, if there was any small thing, she would be quick to mm -mm, this, that, like, and she would address it. Oh, this has come up, this, this, until, you know, you, you squash it. And there's something Apostle Soma would always say that that's why he does not, uh, uh, you know, allow for people to tolerate sickness of any kind because it's literally death trying to show up in your life in small enough doses that you can handle until it shows up in its full form, at which point it's too late to say stand back. So we're going to be praying this morning. I don't know those little things that you have been bearing with, those little things that you have been, you've just been, you know, accommodating, but have no business in your life. Little, little annoyances here, little, little discomforts there, little, little uh, oppression. You know, it's just small, small oppression. It's not too deep. It's not too bad. You know, you are still able to move around and, and attend, you know, to your life. But it is a discomfort. It is a problem. We're going to pray this morning because we don't want to wait till it becomes a situation where the thing is actually contending for, you know, being the owner of your life. At that point in time, you are basically under its thumb. So I got to pray this morning. I don't know what it is that you may have been accommodating and bearing with because it wasn't tough enough for you to shout. So we're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I refuse this thing. I stand against this thing. I push this thing back. I refuse it. We're not going to be like David, who kept quiet the whole, his whole life and waited till this thing became at this, at this level. So we're going to say, Father, I refuse this thing. Anything in your life that you can tell does not look like the picture of God. Anything in your life that does not look like what you, you desire, that does not look like what God has for you, we are going to address it this morning and we're going to confront it. So let's just open our mouths wherever we are. In about two minutes, we'll pray in the spirit and throw those things down immediately. We're not giving it any more room. Let's go. Maliba Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. And when we continue in that story, we see how this thing progressed, right? And so when it happened, instead of everybody to now keep quiet, right, um, and allow this thing happened, um, Solomon's mother stood up. Um, and Nathan, the prophet, stood up as well and said, oh, no, we, we're not going to watch this happen because we know how this thing is supposed to play out. There is this particular story, a particular script for how your life is supposed to play out. But until you stand up and interrupt the interruption, it will happen and it will take things, of course, it will take things to a different direction. So had nobody stood up to address this situation, it would have happened. It would have happened and it would have sent, you know, um, uh, uh, Solomon's destiny, of course. And so that's really why you have to speak up many times. Like Shadow was sharing, like, she, she was like, listen, I know, that, I know where this thing is from. So it's go time, right? Any slight, you know, manifestation, address it. You address it. And so you see this thing is that many times the reason why this thing persists, like I said, is because we don't do anything about it. So some of us come from a background where we're told, and I know that I heard this a lot growing up. Oh, there's nothing like all these things. There's nothing like all these things. You see if you believe it, that it can happen. Meanwhile, there are so many people who do not even believe it. And their lives are still, you know, clearly a victim of, of manipulations and, and, you know, mischief from the enemy. And that's, we prayed about that yesterday against, you know, mischief. So if you then go further into verse 49 and verse 50, okay, then you see the impact of this. And we'll also even take a look at chapter two as well. We'll take a look at one verse there. And this was after uh, Nathan and uh, Bathsheba, that Solomon's mother, had put a plan together and they addressed the situation and they, you know, attacked it and all of that. And David had to stand up and go, you know, uh, set things in place for Solomon to become king. I just want us to picture a situation where nobody said anything. Nobody confronted um, um, uh, Adonijah. Just imagine that. I keep, I'm repeating it because I want you to understand that that's what's going on. So you leave these things, you don't address it, it remains like that. But verse 49 says, it says, And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid, and they rose up and went every man his way. That only happened after uh, uh, Nathan and Bathsheba had stood up to confront what was happening. And they confronted it with wisdom. It wasn't by going to fight or anything. They left that noise behind. They left all of the, you know, whatever the, you know, circus that Adonijah and the people that were involved were doing. And they went straight to meet the king to address the matter with the king. And that's what you must do. Some of us are busy fighting actual situations. Instead of making our way quietly to the king to go and address it there. So we're fighting people in our lives. We're fighting family members. We're fighting friends. Meanwhile, they're only actors in a plan that the enemy has in motion. And so Nathan and, and Bachelor, they don't even argue nothing. Nothing. They just went quietly to the king and went to address it there. And the king gave his, his, his uh, answer and gave his judgment. and. That's how they overthrew it. And you see that once the judgment of the king was passed, once the judgment of the king was executed, it then records in 49. It says, and all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid and rose up and went every man his way. And Adonijah feared because of Solomon. And he too arose and went. You keep quiet, this thing stays there. It will mount the throne. It will rule and reign. But once they, they handle this matter with the king and, you know, the right course of things had been put in place, all of the fanfare and, you know, all of that mess that Adonijah had going on, first of all, the supporting factors 
the supporting you know uh, systems around that defiance around that overthrow that was about to happen they fizzled out one after the other so much so that even the core thing that was an issue adonijah himself he too had to back out simply because even the things that were supporting him and giving him ginger to continue on in in, in, in that defiance and that overthrow they backed out they were the first to back out and then he himself had to walk away because it was alone anyway so at that point in time he had to throw himself down and be like you know what i give up i'm not doing anymore and you know what was interesting because you would think maybe oh he just because he felt that it was his no if you take a look at chapter 2 and verse 15 this is what adonijah um said right this is when he came to solomon's mother after this whole thing happened and he had to back off and you know all the people that came with him had stepped away he said and he said thou knowest that the kingdom was mine mm -hmm. and that all israel set their faces on me that i should reign how be it the kingdom um is turned about and is become my brothers please listen to the last section for it was his from the lord for it was his from the lord for it was his from the lord so even he knew that it belongs to Solomon. So you think that the reason why you know nothing will happen to you or why you won't face any contention is because oh I've I've confessed and I've said oh you know I'm the best I'm the head and all the truth. It didn't matter to Adonijah. So he he didn't even think that okay it was just because um the father liked Solomon best. No, he knew it was his from the Lord, but he was still willing to stand up and contend for it and take it from Solomon, and he would have gotten it. He would have gotten it if nobody did anything about it. It would have happened. It's so interesting that the Solomon that they're fighting for, we didn't even see him. It's Nathan and his mother that are going to meet the king. So this morning, we're going to meet the king. We are taking our matter to the king quietly and with wisdom. We don't have to go to where the you know contention is happening and going to stand there and be making noise. That was pure wisdom. They didn't go out there in the noise and in the, in the careful that was going on. Straight to the king. So that's what we're doing this morning whatever it is that you already know it is yours from the lord there's so many of those things but you have to be willing to go and temporarily before the king and say oh no 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 there's a trespass going on here treason going on here this is a cool happening and we're not going to stand for it i don't know why it was yesterday i was still seeing the news about the cool going on i don't know why cool came up again in a prayer point but whatever that thing is in your life that looks like a cool it belongs to you but then even the enemy wants to overthrow it overthrow you even though it is clear that it is yours from the lord those demons know it those things disturbing you they know it they know that god has appointed you to be married but still they are standing against your marital destiny the blessings testimony they know god has appointed you to be a mother of children yet they are still going to stand against it that you are supposed to be in this place in your career or your whatever but they still are willing to oppose you for it but it is yours from the lord but except you contend for it it will be taken from you right before your eyes in broad daylight too and nobody will say anything about it so let's open our mouth and come before the king this morning whatever that thing is that is still being contended for in your life that is rightfully yours we're asking the king to step in to rule in the matter and let his judgment be executed so that it's done once and for all let's open our mouths this morning and pray in <laughs> <laughs> 
Every way that the enemy is subtracting when he is subtracting, every way that the enemy is subtracting, every way that in Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 Yes. Swiftly, we're going to move to um, another uh, set of prayers that I want us to take also from the book of First Kings. And um, this one ha- pertains to Abiata. Like I said, I was just doing a study and some, some things just jumped out to me. There are a couple more prayer points, but I think this is the last one we'll take so that we can wrap up early. But this one pertains to Abiata, and it's just so interesting because I think many of us did not pay enough attention to what was going on with him, right? So I'll I'll just read what happened because if you remember this whole uh, tool that was being put in place by Adonijah, the reason why it was advancing and moving forward was because he had a few people on his side who were prominent, who were standing by him. So Joab was, was standing by him and Abiatha the priest was also standing by him, right? Um, and there were a couple of other people as well who were standing by him and, you know, you know, egging the people on to, you know, make him king and all of that. And so when Solomon finally gets put on his seat as a uh, king, um, the first thing he did was to address those people who um, were siding with um with uh with uh Adonijah to take the throne from him and uh one of the people who got caught in the in that you know situation um was Abiathar and it's so interesting what happened to Abiathar here right because in uh chapter 2 verse 27 it says so Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest unto the Lord that he might fulfill the word of the Lord which he spake concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh now, th- there's a reason why this is very important, right? Because this was not just because he um, didn't want Abiathar anymore. Obviously, what Abiathar did was bad enough for him to even kill him. But the reason he didn't kill him was because he was a priest. So he said, you know what? I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to strip you of your priestly office and so you just go back to your home and do whatever you want to do with yourself but as far as this priesthood you no longer can be a priest here anymore and the bible says that he did it so that he might fulfill the word of the lord which he speak concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. So many of us, when we read this, you know, parts of the Bible, it's a lot of like genealogy and just, and this one begat this, that begat that, this begat. And so we miss out on, on, on some stuff. But you see why this thing um, happened to Abiata? It was not necessarily because Abiata was a bad person. It's clear here that this thing that affected him started with Eli started with Eli. And I think Eli was probably, I think maybe about four generations before um, Abiatha, right? So the what happened was, you know, when God showed up because of Eli's sons that were desecrating the um, the altar and um, Eli did not chastise them, you know, he had, uh, he had cursed Eli's lineage. And one of the things that he said concerning Eli, Eli's lineage was that there will not be any one of them that will be uh, that will grow old. So he said here in from um, this is chapter this is First Samuel chapter two, and so from verse uh, I think it's thirty one. It says, behold, the days come. This was a judgment of Eli's bloodline, right? It says, behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thine father's house, and there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy uh, in my habitation in all the wealth which the which God had given Israel. And there shall not be an old man um, in thine house forever. And he said, and the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine thine heart. Now, there's another translation of this that makes it clear what the judgment was, right? He said that there will not be an old man in his lineage. And even the one that, you know, still manages to survive and not die, that one would still not be allowed to complete his his, uh, life as a priest. So that judgment was so grievous. And it was upon 
um, Eli's lineage. And if we follow the story, we'll see that that thing truly followed the bloodline. That was what implicated Ahimelech, right? So what the, 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 the thing I'm trying to point out here is this, is that when there is an active curse going on, it doesn't matter what your best efforts are. You always find yourself on the losing side. You always find yourself against the, you know, the, uh, uh, what's going on. And so whatever the case may be, you will one way or another find yourself working against your own good. So with Ahimelech, what did he do but help David? And that became the basis upon which Saul took him and slew him and his sons okay remember that this is not necessarily because ahimelech is a bad person or because he didn't serve properly is the fact that there was a curse that was placed on that family because of eli because of eli and his sons that was the judgment that was given so it wasn't like the enemy was fighting them this one was a legitimate curse that came on that bloodline and so eli goes his sons are killed and then there's ahimelech who's out there just doing what he knows how to do and somehow finds himself on Saul's bad side and Saul takes him out as well as his sons. Now, Abiathar managed to escape that situation. He managed to uh, escape that massacre and went and attached himself with David. This is so crucial because when there is an active curse, there are spirits that monitor that curse to ensure that you find yourself on the side of the line where that curse can be active where that curse can happen. So that's why you don't just assume things. Now, Abiata is there, a good man. If you see what happened here, Abiata was good, very loyal to David, very loyal to David. And that was actually the reason why Solomon didn't kill him because he was loyal to David. Even when uh, David's throne was being contended for by Absalom, Abiata remained loyal to David. But what happened in Abiata's life that caused him to find himself on the wrong side of the law? Who knows? I don't know. But it's clear here that it was not just because Abiata was a bad person or he wasn't smart or anything. That is what happens when there's a curse that is lingering and finding a way so that it can express itself. If the situations around you are being manipulated by forces that are interested in seeing that curse fulfilled. So even when something happens to where, you know, you have now found a way to align yourself with God, it's that because that thing is on a bloodline, it's trailing bloodline. And there are spirits who post themselves to, to follow and ensure that that thing can be activated. And so Abiata managed to escape that this whole time, only to find himself on the wrong side of the matter when Solomon gets in the picture. And because of that, the only thing that spared him was the fact that he, he served David. But he got pulled out of that office, say, go back and see that you are not going to be a priest. And Solomon found other people to stay there. Remember, I'm saying that this was not because Abiathar was a bad person. There was already a curse on that, the judgment on that bloodline. It affected everybody and he was, you would think he was about to escape it. It, it still met him. So we're going to pray this morning. We're going to come, we're going to stand up. And that's something that we do here a lot. And it's important. When Shade mentioned what she was doing, she mentioned how some of these things tied to like things that she had observed patterns and all of that. That's why we, we, we fight against these things. Many times we don't know. Sometimes we actually do. Because if we look back, we can see people who are living in the active, you know, uh, dispensation of these curses. So we know that if we don't do anything about it, it's going to continue to flow. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray because it, to me, it was really sad what happened to Abiata. How do you serve that well? How do you serve that consistently only to get caught in the web, only to be found on the wrong side of things when a new king is put in place? So the same thing that happened with, you know, his father with Ahimelech, the same thing now was happening to him. The only thing was that they didn't kill him, which was probably worse anyway, because it's like, what else is his life for if he's not to be a priest? And then they removed him. They removed him from being priest unto the Lord. And put him there. And the Bible records that it's not just because Solomon wanted to punish him. He said that he may fulfill the word of the Lord, which is spake concerning the house of Eli. So we're going to pray right now that, Lord, I throw myself at your mercy. Anything, any pattern or any curses. Sometimes if someone says, are you poor? I pray about it. Well, if you like, don't pray. That's why I said your mouth is very important in charting the course of your destiny. It is. So you have to be aware, when you are aware of things, then you know how to fight. So you're going to say, Father, anything in my bloodline, anything in my family, you know, any patterns, any curses that may be seeking occasion against me to find expression or to, you know, 
yeah, to basically find expression in my own life. Father, I throw myself at your mercy. I throw myself at your mercy that by the blood of the lamb that I will be exempted. Father, exempt me by the blood. Exempt me by the blood. That's our prayer this morning. From any family patterns, any curses, any kind of things in our bloodline, finding a place to seeking occasion against me to, 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 to be manifested. Lord, I plead for mercy and I ask that the blood of Jesus exempt me. Let's just open our mouth and take that prayer. in jesus name we pray amen. amen i just want us to know that when we gather like this at the altar every month god hears every single prayer point that we bring before him so as many of us as are praying and asking that father any of these things that are flowing in my family line, I'm seeing it even starting from my grandma's, you know, uh, uh, generation. I can see it in the lives of my uncles or aunts. I can see part how it's even impacted my mother or my father. Lord, exempt me. The Lord hears our cries this morning and you are exempted by the blood of the lamb in the name of Jesus. Every such family pattern, every such curses, everything that trails the bloodline in your family, you are exempted from it in the name of Jesus. We're going to wrap up in a couple of minutes, but I do want to release um, some of these words. Uh, there were some things that the Holy Spirit showed me overnight. And um, some of these things, I would need maybe the people impacted to reach out to me personally. Um, and then some people, I hope that they are on the call, but there may be something that is for someone who's not on the call. But many times, you know, the members who miss the meetings end up going back to watch the recording, to listen to the recording. So it is with this in mind that I'm releasing this. So there's someone here today. Um, I'm going to pray and, you know, we'll wrap up for the morning after this. So please just, uh, you know, bear with me a minute or two. There's someone here this morning that I saw that, and I don't even know if it's one of the ladies in our midst or if it's somebody who is a friend or family member of, you know, one of the ladies in our midst. But what I saw was that you're not married, but somehow you have found yourself pregnant and you are at the point of considering taking it out because it is, <laughs> it is that big of an issue. And so you are considering taking it out. And what I saw was an intervention asking you not to do it. Obviously you don't need, um, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. You don't need, you know, anybody specifically to tell you not to do it because you already know that it's not, um, uh, you know, the Lord does not allow it. But I saw an intervention specifically asking you not to do it. So if you're that person on the altar today and this is your situation, reach out to me personally. My number is on the groups. Whether you're in the U.S. group or you're in the Africa group, my number is on the groups. My name is there, so you can see it. If this is you, if this is your family member that's implicated in this, reach out to me. When a message like this comes that specifically talks about it and it's telling you do not do it, it means that if you go on and do it, the consequences might be more than what you can bear. So if that's you who's implicated in this, or you are the sister or the friend to someone, um, a Christian, you know, who is obviously, you know, uh, overtaken by this matter and is indeed considering this, reach out to me. There's someone else on the altar this morning, and I just want to release the word of the Lord to you. Again, probably you, maybe a family member who is connected to you. Um, and I can see that this person has been waiting on God for a baby. This person has been waiting on God for the fruit of the womb. And what I saw was that this person was actually pregnant. This person was pregnant and in the early stages of the pregnancy and was celebrating, you know, the fact that they were pregnant. So I release that word that has come from the Lord for you in this season, whoever you are who's trusting God for that, you know, fruit of the womb. If you're standing in for a family member, then you also receive this word for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, that one among us who is trusting you for the fruit of the womb, who you also showed me that this prayer has been answered and that you have blessed them with a child of their own. I ask that you perform your word in their life, even in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you visit mm -hmm. them and everything that needs to be done to ensure that this testimony is a reality in their life. I ask that you visit them and do that which only you can in the name of Jesus. I ask that you touch them. I ask that you touch their spouse. Let there be a correction of everything and anything that opposes the occurrence of pregnancy in their life in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if there be any forces standing against this person and impacting their ability to take seed and to bear a child, Father, I ask that those forces be judged and be pulled down even now in the name of Jesus. And let the word of the Lord be fulfilled in, be fulfilled in this person's life and let them receive their child even in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. There's someone else here who um, you have been dealing with a health condition and it shows up kind of like pains um, around your body. And this thing started um, after you had a child. I don't know after which child, maybe for a second, I don't know. But this thing started um, in you as it, uh, after having your child, an ailment. I don't know what form the ailment is, but I could see that you have been dealing with the condition impacting your health, impacting your, your basically your well-being since having a child. There are those kinds of situations where a person has a child and then after that, you know, maybe they start having problems whether with their bones or this, or maybe they, you know, they're, you know, dealing with depression or whatever the case may be. But I saw that you have been dealing with a health condition in your body since having a child. Okay. Um, Eromina, thanks for raising your hand. Um, do you want to share what that is, or would you like for me to just pray with you? Perhaps it's a private matter, and I can just pray yes, with you. Ma. Yes, ma. It's it's CTS. They call it carpal tunnel syndrome. I've had it okay. since my first, and okay. it just freezes my nerves in my hand. Sometimes I can't use it if I type or if I do anything. Maybe I'm holding a knife or something. It mm -hmm. affects my mood. Same okay. delivery. Okay, thank you. Thank you for uh, for um, for sharing that because when I saw it, I saw that um, the actual area, it was related to the bone one way or another. That's where it was affecting. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your daughter. I thank you because this is the hour of her healing. It is her appointed time to be delivered from this situation. It is her appointed time to be delivered from this condition. And so even right now, I release the healing power of God to Aromina, wherever she is. Aromina, if you can just maybe stretch your hand towards me. I don't know if you can come on video where you are. We don't have to see your face. You can just use your hand to cover the camera. Okay. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your healing power into Eromina's body right now in the name of Jesus. Everything in her body is making for this condition. I ask that it be arrested in the name of Jesus. I speak complete healing to her, her body in the name of Jesus. Because it is your will that we be fruitful and we, be, we multiply. Mm -hmm. That means there is no reason why fulfilling that mandate by you mm -hmm. should cause sickness in our bodies. This is a violation of the covenants of the Lord. This is a violation of the instruction of the Lord. And so right now I speak to everything in her body that is causing her body to disobey and to go out of alignment with what God has spoken. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Right now, even the healing power is flowing right now. Even right now, the healing power is flowing. Father, I ask that that healing power move all over her body and make that correction, make that correction, make that correction. Let her healing be perfected. Let it be complete. Even in the name of Jesus right now, from today henceforth, she ceases to deal with that situation anymore. She is made whole. She is healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to those bones in her body and I speak to you to begin to follow the instruction of God. I ask that every malfunction in every uh, uh, everything that it was doing in the past that is not of God, it ceases right now and follows the instruction of the Lord and perform even as they were created to in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. In Jesus' yes. name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Romina. Um, sorry, ladies. I know we're uh, running late, but we're almost done. There's somebody else here. I don't know. There's been things going on in your family that have just weighed you down. They have weighed you down and it seems like everybody else around you is moving ahead and somehow it feels like your family is not other families around you seem to be progressing but it feels like you your own family is not and you have been wondering what is going on why are we not advancing what is going on the lord showed me overnight that that is your situation but he also showed me that what you need to do is that you need to speak to the lord concerning your husband whatever is going on in your lives is going to require your husband being broken out of whatever is holding him back and, or trapping him um, to move the family ahead. And so the instruction that came specifically was go and ask God to help your husband. Go and ask God to step into your husband's situation. Go and ask God to deliver onto your husband his portion because it is in the delivery of his portion that your entire family moves forward. So I don't know who that person is who had, you know, that the family has been in this situation and you've been trying to fix it by yourself. You've been praying, you've been going to one meeting or another. Because what I even saw was that, yeah, you've, you've seen different people and asked them to pray for you all. But I, this is basically a word of wisdom for you. So you understand how to channel your prayers, direct those prayers towards your husband. It needs to break off of him. He needs to be pulled out of it and you will see the whole family move forward. So Father, in the name of Jesus, whoever that one is amongst us today, I ask Lord that you grant her the grace to stand in the place of intercession and that you give her the wisdom to order her prayers accordingly so that she may see the manifestation of your goodness in her life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. The last one here, and I don't know who it is, Again, like the first one, maybe you need to reach out to me personally so we can talk through this and pray and see how God you know, wants to step in. What I saw was that you have been going through too many frustrations in your life. So many problems have been hitting you left, right, and center. It feels like you've tarried in a situation for too long. And so now you are sadly at the point where you are considering and wondering why you are still here. You are at the point where you are truly wondering why you're still here. You want to just take yourself out of the picture because it's just to the point where you're like, you don't see the point anymore because of this level of frustration. So I'm going to pray for you and break off this demonic you know, spirit that is giving you these thoughts of why you're still here, why you're still bothering. Have you not had enough? I'm going to pray for you and break off the spirit that's providing or giving these thoughts to you. But if you need to talk further, message me as well. If you can't find me in the list, message Ola and have her connect you to me. If you need to talk, we'll pray. Father, whoever that one is in our midst who has suffered too many afflictions, who has suffered too many uh, sorrows, too many frustrations, and the enemy is beginning to whisper to her, 
and talk to her about why there's no point in her hanging on, why there's no point in her being here. Lord, I ask that all of those voices be shut off in her life in the name of Jesus. Every demonic voice that is whispering to her, giving her suggestions that are not in line with the will of God for her, I shut them now in the name of Jesus. I decree that she is, she is um, released to live her life um, according to what God has spoken for her in the name of Jesus. I speak an end to that torment. I speak an end to that torment in her mind, making her question her being here. Lord, I speak an end to that torment in the name of Jesus. And I ask that she be released from this affliction in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because her testimony is sealed and it is completed in the name of Jesus. Whoever you are, the first case I mentioned about the abortion, and then this last case I mentioned about the, uh, you know, just being frustrated and, and just thinking there's no point in being here. Please feel free to reach out to me if you need further counseling you know, or to pray for that. Um, we trust God to do what only he can. Um, he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from destruction. And that's what has happened this morning. This is the word sent directly from the Lord. And so everyone who is involved, just know that God has decided to show up in your matter. God is now in your business and it's ready to deliver you from any and every affliction it is that you have suffered. So Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for everyone who's gathered before you to pray. We thank you because we do not gather unto man, but unto you, O oh God. And so I present every one of these women before you. Lord, I ask that that which we have prayed about today, I thank you because you have heard them. I thank you, Father, because testimonies will be delivered speedily in the name of Jesus. As many as have been oppressed and afflicted by the enemy who have felt the need to be quiet and not known how to how to approach you and how to address the situation. Lord, I ask that they receive the spirit of boldness. I ask that you grant them utterance by the spirit to be able to table their case, to stand in the place of intercession and push back the hand of the enemy in their life, that they may lay hold of that which belongs to them in the name of Jesus. And for anyone else here who is believing on you, for anything else that was not mentioned specifically today, Lord, I ask that you meet every one of us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus. As we depart from the altar today, we are blessed and are going out and in our coming in. The works of our hands are blessed. It is well with us on every side in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Uh, ladies, amen. sorry, just before we jump off the call this morning, um, the third the third day is tomorrow. And I know for many people, it's not convenient because it's a Sunday morning and people are getting ready for church. And I get that. If you can't join, that's great. But the efficacy of an altar is in the consistency. So we will do the prayers tomorrow morning, Sunday. For those in the US, you know, it's, it's one o'clock your time, so you can still make it. Those in other African countries, you're probably getting ready for church or already in church. Whatever the case may be, if you can join, join in. But the prayers will hold tomorrow morning, Sunday. Okay, so that's all I wanted to share. Um, tomorrow, we will also pray. I've been wanting us to pray specifically for the anniversary coming up in Abuja. Sorry, not the anniversary, but the official launch. When we launch something here at EIC and King's Arrow, we like to do one in person, not just online. So it's coming up this month on the 14th of September. And I'd like for us to pray and commit it to God in prayer. So if you can hop on tomorrow, we're going to spend some time praying for the anniversary that everyone who attends, that God will meet them. God will give them, you know, their moment with him and they will have a remarkable testimony from it. I'm sorry we went over time today, but please try to join tomorrow morning if you can. We'll also pray some things as the spirit of God reveals them, but specifically we'll pray for the anniversary. So I'm imploring you to please show up so that we can intercede for everyone who will be in attendance or be watching remotely that day okay god bless you all and have a wonderful rest of your day we'll talk soon bye everyone thank you bye bye thank, thank you, you. Bye.